fossil fuels are terrible. If I could get in a time machine and go back to the 1700s, I'd do everything I could to make sure the Industrial Revolution never happened, right? <laughs> this may shock you, but I'm going to say it anyways. I am grateful for the progress fossil fuels have enabled us to make. Without them, I'd be living a life that was far shorter and much more miserable. In fact, without the medical advances that have come with our progress, I'd very likely be dead already. And I don't know about you, but I like electricity and technology and being able to visit interesting parts of the world through the miracles of travel and television and the internet. All things that have now become commonplace thanks to energy from fossil fuels. So if they've brought us all these benefits, does that mean we should keep using them forever? I think it's appropriate to acknowledge and be grateful for the benefits that coal and gas and oil have brought us. But what we know today that we didn't know all that much about 300 years ago is that they also have significant drawbacks. A big price tag attached, in fact, and that price is coming due. And what we also know today is that there are better, cleaner sources of energy to power our growth going forward. When it comes to fossil fuels, it's time to move on, and here's why. First, there's a simple issue of pollution. Extracting and burning fossil fuels creates an enormous amount of pollution, choking our lungs, dirtying our air, and contaminating our water and our soil. Coal is the worst. Considering only the health costs from air pollution, coal has not been economically viable for a long time. So why are we still using it? because those who bear the costs are not those who reap the profits. Around the world, it's estimated that almost 4 million people die prematurely every year from outdoor air pollution, 200,000 of those in the U.S. alone. In 2018, the State of Global Air report estimated that 95% of the world's population lives in areas that don't have healthy air according to World Health Organization standards. Imagine if something else, say some mysterious disease, were killing that many people every year. We'd be up in arms for the government to be finding a cure. But somehow, because this has been going on for a long time, we've gotten used to it. People who can afford to buy houses in nicer neighborhoods with better air quality, it's usually those who can't afford a better place to live who bear the brunt of the impacts. Even though coal is the dirtiest, extraction and burning of oil and natural gas take their toll too. From mountaintop coal removal to oil spills and the tar sands, fossil fuels exert a massive cost that is subsidized by all of us who share the land, the water, and the air that they pollute. But things are changing. London, England is famous for its pea super smogs, exacerbated by air pollution. In fact, the very first air quality legislation was created by King Edward I in 1307. While his queen was living in the tower he ruled, no one was allowed to burn coal in the surrounding area. When she was gone, of course, all bets were off. You can imagine how long that lasted. Yet, in April 2017, the United Kingdom had its first coal-free day. Everyone needs electricity. I think most of us would agree. And there are still nearly a billion people who don't have it. But did you know that most of the new energy growth is in renewables? That's right. The Global Trends in Renewable Energy Investment Report found that in 2017, more new solar was added than more new fossil fuels all put together. With China leading the way, new investment in renewables over the last 15 years totals nearly two and a half trillion dollars. And future projections track by decade. The International Energy Agency forecasts that if current trends continue, 40% of all global power generation will come from renewables by 2040. Bloomberg's new energy outlook estimates that we'll be up to 50% by 2050, only counting wind and solar. Today, continuing to promote fossil fuels, is like investing in horse farms and buggy businesses when Henry Ford is already turning out the Model T Ford, or snapping up blockbuster stocks and stockpiling DVDs when Netflix is already taking over the market. The world is changing, 
And even though it might seem scary sometimes, clinging to the past is not going to stop it. Then, of course, there's our last reason, climate change. Extracting and burning coal and gas and oil releases carbon dioxide and other heat-trapping gases directly into the atmosphere that would otherwise take millions of years to reach it. These gases have built up to the point where they're increasing the temperature of the entire planet. And this is already affecting our lives and our economy in very serious ways. If you want to know how, watch almost any other of our Global Weirding episodes. The world knows this. And that's why in 2015, 195 countries met in Paris and agreed to keep warming below at least two degrees Celsius. This agreement has enormous implications for our energy sources. Because for countries that take this seriously, it means they have to do more to cut fossil fuel use faster and bump up clean energy. And they're doing it. France plans to ban all gas and diesel vehicles by 2040. The Netherlands plans to cut its emissions 95% by 2050. Scotland is already producing two-thirds of its electricity from renewables and has a target of 100% by 2020. Many organizations are also divesting from fossil fuels for both practical and ethical reasons. Practically, because the ongoing shift to renewables, powered primarily by economics, plus the extra impetus to reduce carbon emissions to meet the Paris targets, means that a significant amount of the fossil fuel reserves may be kept right where they are now, buried in the ground. If we're to meet the Paris target, this would include up to 80% of known coal reserves, 50% of gas reserves, and 33% of oil reserves. Any companies banking on the financial worth of these resources would be left with what's called stranded assets, at least 300 billion of them by 2035, according to the International Energy Agency. That's why the president of the Rockefeller Fund announced their decision to divest from fossil fuels like this. John D. Rockefeller, the founder of Standard Oil, moved America out of whale oil and into petroleum. And we are quite convinced that if he were alive today, as an astute businessman looking to the future, he would be moving out of fossil fuels and investing in clean, renewable energy. Of course, ethically, due to the negative impacts of climate change around the world, many additional organizations have chosen to sell or otherwise rid themselves of fossil fuel investments as well. The moral divestment movement began with students in the US urging their institutions and their universities to divest. Since then, it spread around the world, from faith-based organizations like the Church of England to dozens of cities like Copenhagen, Christchurch, Paris, Sydney, even New York, and entire countries like Ireland. By 2018, a total of more than $6 trillion have been divested from fossil fuels, and that number continues to grow. The bottom line is this. Fossil fuels got us to where we are today, but they take us further at our peril. Thankfully, now we have better, cleaner, and cheaper ways to get the energy we need. Ways that don't pollute our air and our water and don't change our climate. I'm grateful for what we've had, don't get me wrong, but I'm even more grateful for what the future will bring. Thanks for watching Global Weirding. This episode was brought to you in part by Citizens Climate Lobby. If you have any questions about climate versus weather, let us know during one of our Facebook Live Q&As. And please be sure to check out globalweirdingseries.com for more episodes. See you next time.